Home Assistant 2025.12 is landing today, the final release of the year of course, and this month we have real-time energy monitoring, default dashboard improvements, more changes to the automation editor, and measuring water consumption. First up though, we have Home Assistant Labs. Now, this isn't necessarily a new feature in of itself, but it does enable other features, and that's because it's a new way of testing and getting a look at new features in advance before they are quite ready for prime time. Now, it's not a beta test or anything like that. The features are fully working and ready to go, but they may change or be removed in the future, so it's a way of the team letting people try things early to get feedback. Think of things like the new areas dashboard or the home dashboard, which were released in an early preview first. I would imagine that things like that will come under labs in the future. If you want to enable labs features, head over to settings, system, and then labs, and then you can enable labs features. Now, the cool thing here is that it's not a global option, so you don't need to opt into every labs feature or not you can selectively enable or disable certain features as you like, which I thought is pretty cool as it means if you don't like a new preview feature, you can turn it off. And likewise, if you do want to use it, you can just turn that specific one on. The first labs feature is actually a really important new one, which is of course, winter mode. But seriously, there's actually a big first feature in here, which is the intuitive triggers and conditions option. If you enable that and then head over to create an automation, you will notice if you add a trigger that the options will look quite a bit different to the way they did before. And this is using their new targets methodology. Firstly, you now have floors or areas at the top. If you don't have floors, then you will just see areas. And then you have devices associated with each area in the level underneath that. If you click on a device or a floor or an area, it will show you some triggers that can be used like fans, lights or media players, just depending on which devices you have. Then in the next section, you have entities, helpers, devices and services that are not yet assigned to any area. Again, each containing or housing different entities, devices or actions. And then at the bottom, you will see any labels that you have set up. And again, it will show acts and actions associated with those labels. As always, up at the top, you can search. And if you prefer the old trigger methods, you can click on the triggers tab to switch over to those. Or again, just disable the feature in labs if you want to go back, which is awesome to be able to do. This change also comes over to conditions as well as actions where you will see this new structure. I'm really curious to see what you guys think of this change. For me, I'm actually a little torn on it. On the one hand, I do see what they are trying to do with the organization and targeting devices. But on the other hand, it does kind of feel like more clicks to get to the same thing, but that's possibly just because I have a muscle memory of what I'm looking for where a beginner wouldn't. I'm very interested to hear what your thoughts are down in the comments, as I imagine this one might be more split than usual, or maybe it's just me, who knows. I also notice other little quirks, like a lot of triggers are missing on a lot of devices, for example, on occupancy or motion or temperature or door sensors, as well as many others. It just says no triggers available. And then for some reason, it's named services here instead of actions, like it is in other places in the UI, but these are just minor issues and it is a labs feature after all, so not too worried about that. Next up, we have some dashboard improvements, of course, in this release, starting with a system-wide default dashboard where you can now set which dashboard will be applied for all users instead of them having to go in and manually set their own. You can do this by heading over to settings, dashboard, and then clicking the three dots on your chosen dashboard and setting it as default. However, some users may want to have a different dashboard or maybe for some devices like a wall tablet, you might want to load a different dashboard on there. And you can do that by going over to your user profile, finding the dashboard setting and picking the dashboard you want to load by default for that user from the dropdown list. Next for dashboards, the energy dashboard now has support for real-time power monitoring and downstream water tracking. 
This real-time power monitoring, as the name suggests, lets you see what's happening with your power usage as it's happening right now. Very useful for tracking down particularly high usage devices during a troubleshooting session. You can configure power sensors in the energy dashboard settings if you have some and then watch your energy usage instantly load and start reporting in the energy dashboard. Water tracking has been possible in Home Assistant since 2022.11, so over three years ago now, but in this release you can now track downstream water consumption meaning you can now track individual devices using your water and then represent them in your energy dashboard. This also adds a new sand key card for visualizing that water consumption too. Nice. Next, you can now reorder areas and floors into the order that makes most sense for you. If you head over to settings and then areas, there is now a drag and drop icon on the floor to help you rearrange however you like. And on areas, you can just drag and drop those around too. And one nice benefit of this is being able to arrange rooms into floors by dragging and dropping rather than having to go in and assign each one manually. Finally, for the dashboard stuff, the home dashboard now has a new sidebar, which has quick access links in it. I do kind of wish you could change which side of the dashboard it appears on or even toggle it on or off, but maybe in future updates that will come. As mentioned a second ago, because you can now rearrange floors and areas, that order will now show up on your dashboard here, which is really nice. The home dashboard also exits being an experimental feature as of this release too, and the older areas dashboard is now removed as of this release, as they said it was evolving into the home dashboard, which I think makes sense. And what I was saying a few releases ago that they felt really similar, and so this seems logical. Finally, for the big stuff, there is now a tool for debugging AI conversations, getting a slight peek under the hood and seeing why it did what it did, which tools were called and the system prompt, allowing you to get a little bit of insight into any AI conversation agents that you might have. You will find this over in settings, voice and then debug on a conversation pipeline where you will then get some extra info and drop downs on the conversation that happened. As for the little things this month, firstly, the dashboard editor now supports undo and redo behavior as was added to the automation editor a few releases ago. The OpenAI integration now supports GPT 5.1 models. There are three new template math functions called clamp, wrap and remap for working with numbers in templates. The Anthropic integration now supports AI tasks. And finally, the Real Link integration now supports exposure mode and audio noise reduction controls on supported cameras. As for new integrations this month, we have 11 new integrations in this release, including weather, air quality, pool monitoring, sauna, storage, and so much more, which is great to see. And we also see one integration move over from YAML over into the UI. In terms of breaking changes or backwards incompatible changes, we have a very small list this month and nothing major at all jumping out, which is great. But do make sure to have a read for yourself before upgrading. And that's about gonna do it for this release. The final release of this year is done. Another good one to round us out until 2026. As always, I would love to hear your favorite new feature down in the comments below. I do personally like the new labs feature. Being able to turn new features on or off individually is super cool and really handy. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Please drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.